Welcome back, my fellow duplicants, to Oxygen Not Included. Today, we're taking a good look at how we produce liquid oxygen using a thermal aqua tuner. So, the first thing we started off here is using a thermal regulator to just make a little bit of liquid oxygen. Now, we're going to bump that up to a machine that is 10 times as powerful, which is the aqua tuner. And then, at that point, we can explore different liquids once we have that kind of in place. So, we can take a look at super coolant. Super coolant is a very, very cool... Uh, new element that's or whatever new liquid that's in the game that we can use to make some pretty awesome stuff Because it can go very very cold it can also go very very hot and has a massive specific heat capacity Which would you know It is going to allow us to do some cool stuff like liquid hydrogen, which we will get to but today We're going to take a look at the thermal aqua tuner and we're going to expand on the original idea that we had with the Thermal regulator now there were several people in the comment sections asking you know Why would we even do this? Why, why not just look straight at super coolant and the reason for that is because this system down here is Not only for liquid oxygen You can use this to control the temperature of whatever it is you want to control the temperature of if you want to cool it down So by using something like the carbon skimmer to take that heat out of water that has become hot not only is that a method to cool the actual water itself, which I get many questions of how do you actually cool water? Well, that's one good way of doing it. You can actually take this, you convert it to polluted water, then you bring it back into whatever tank or reservoir that you might be using. You don't necessarily need to use a reservoir like this. You can just use a normal one like that. However, you want to make sure that you don't accidentally mix in germs to that, because if you do, that would be bad. So avoid anything that's coming from a toilet, a sink, a shower, all that stuff. Just kind of keep that all off by itself. Um, and just kind of keep this a nice closed loop so that if it is dirty water or gray water, essentially you're going to scrub it out with the water sieve right here and you'll just keep all the germs out of it. As long as you keep the germs out of it, you'll be good to go. But we saw this when we actually looked at the form over here, of just how much thermal energy we can rip out of that cycle there by dropping it from, let's say, 90 which is a nice safe temperature down to 40, which is the outlet temperature of that carbon skimmer. You're, with that, we are able to delete 208 DTUs worth of heat if we went from one to the other. So that's massive. And again, like I was saying, you don't necessarily need to run liquid oxygen. In this example, we are doing liquid oxygen, but you can use it to actually control farms, many farms, if you wanted to keep a large area nice and cool without using something like wheeze warts. However, there are a good amount of comments that we're talking about, you know, potentially just using a couple of wheeze warts to keep this thermal regulator cool enough to do what it needs to do here. So if you wanted to do that method, then you can absolutely do that method. There's also a lot of other ways that we can convert or convey heat into other things like petroleum or oil before you reprocess that into a different substance. There's a lot of different ways to kind of move the heat around. This is one example and it works pretty good. And you get a nice byproduct, which is polluted dirt, which you can then recycle into dirt, which is useful for growing farms. So this is actually a pretty good setup for keeping a large farm nice and cool. Or it should be. I'll set it up one day and we'll see how it works. All right, so first things first. What do we have up here? We have a thermal aqua tuner. So let's head on over to the forums real quick. And just take a look at the thermal aqua tuner. So the thermal aqua tuner actually puts out a little bit more heat that just comes from running the power. And the amount of power it uses is 1.2 kilowatts. Now, now with that in mind, if you compare that to the thermal regulator, it's still a more efficient machine. Matter of fact, it's twice as efficient. Now that's because it's going to drop the temperature of whatever liquid that's running through there by 14 degrees Celsius. So it's still doing the same amount of, you know, same amount of heat pumping except for it's working with liquid, which is 10 times as dense when it's inside of the pipe. So one kilogram for a gas pipe, however, you get 10 kilograms for a liquid pipe. So whereas the thermal regulator is 240 watts per kilogram, the thermal aqua tuner is 120 watts per kilogram. Therefore, it's twice as efficient. It just takes a lot more to run it. So you can't run it off the little skinny wires. You gotta run the big medium fat wires. It's the new official name. So question seven down here is how much heat can the thermal aqua tuner transfer? And the answer to that one is that times 10. Her, I know, right? Not too complicated. Numbers, give me some, give me some 
Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Mm, too many dead animals. Dead animal places. 336,000. Okay, so question number eight is going to be well, how many uh, carbon skimmers am I going to need at this point to keep up with the aqua tuner? Oh, that was a spoiler, I guess. Now, I should mention that this is all based off of using liquid oxygen. So that should rephrase this question seven. How much can the thermal energy transfer on liquid? Yeah. I don't know why that's caps, but whatever. So that is fairly simple. How much heat can the carbon skimmer delete? Uh, and that's going to require at least, well, I guess uh, technically I'd take this and I'd round it. So it'd actually be two. So I'm going to need another carbon skimmer next to this guy. Now, since the carbon skimmer only really processes one kilogram of water, and I still have a pipe, so I really don't need to expand the water sieve. Actually, no, wait, 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 that was less. Yes, it was whatever. Okay, so that's cool. In this case, it's going to take, if we round that, it would actually be two. So if I do that number, there you go, two. And uh, that's still less than what the sieve can handle. So therefore, I don't need another sieve. So what I want to do here is modify this system that I already have here so that I can run an aqua tuner in here as well. Now, there were some questions about why I was using a reservoir. And the reason is because it's really easy to count. You don't necessarily need a reservoir. You can get away with a tank just like that. Actually, I just want to destroy. Dang it. Destroy. Oh, got to be careful here. So deconstruct some buildings. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this to the right so that I have a larger chamber. Do I need a larger chamber? No, no, actually I don't. Oh, you know what I need to answer? is how much oxygen can actually pump into this thing. Back to the form. Question nine. Well, that's pretty easy. Whatever, they're gonna write it. Same question as five, just nine. And then we need to take this because I get tired of typing on liquid. Okay, so how much can I cool on liquid oxygen? The answer is gonna be 10 times that, so you get the idea. Okay, now there's one thing to mention here is that there, there's this thing called enthalpy and <laughs> It exists, but not necessarily in our game that I know of, but, um, yeah. I think what was happening in my last video here is that there was some inefficiencies in the materials over here. So some of the heat that was being generated by the thermal regulator was getting back into the hydrogen pipe that was inside of here. Because I'm not using the best, best materials possible. I'm kind of using the materials that you potentially have available. So some of these in here might be like ceramic and stuff like that. Slight inefficiencies, not huge inefficiencies. There were also some other comments that we're talking about, whether it be before or after. So the flyer dragon right here says, have you considered checking the temperature gas after the tank or before the tank? Um, yeah, it would pretty much, I think it would do pretty much the same thing. Just it would run more in one situation than would the other. I guess one of the things to mention here is that while this is averaging, we could probably work without this gas reservoir altogether because as long as we know how much we can actually effectively put into the thing once it's down to temperature it should just kind of maintain itself so the only reason i say that is because the the tanks are actually kind of high up on the the research tree let me find tank just keep looking you'll find it it's here somewhere there's the liquid one. Uh-huh. That's not up as high as it was before. I mean, this stuff keeps moving around. Ventilation, pressure management. Nope. Okay, maybe it's under reservoir. Yeah. Dude, this is worse than doing a puzzle. There it is. <laughs> I guess it isn't quite as high up as I thought it was anymore. So, oh, now the thermal's... <laughs> I can't keep track of this thing. Okay, I guess the tanks are not as exclusive as they used to be. All right, good luck. I try. <laughs> I don't, don't always succeed. Okay, so let's take a look here at what do I need to do? I need to bring in the thermal aqua tuner into the loop. So once I have 
this precious liquid oxygen, what I want to do is, is run it through and kind of cool that liquid oxygen down a little bit further so that I have a liquid loop that runs through here as well. So we'll put that off to the right. Okay, so I'm slightly tempted to rework this whole thing. I don't know, my temptation just went down now that I start looking at these overlays. <laughs> okay, so what I was thinking here is if I put the water sieve in the same chamber as the carbon dioxide, then the overpressure nature of the carbon dioxide would keep the polluted dirt from letting off polluted oxygen. We'll just deconstruct that and rework the liquid loop because I can do that. I'll empty the pipes and we'll clear the floor. There we go. And we're just gonna rework the liquid here. So deconstruct liquid pipes. Okay, try not to forget all the important stuff. This gas reservoir could be inside of here, but it doesn't need to, whatever. It's inside of a vacuum. I'll tell you what, we can do like a real blueprints video on this another time when I actually go to try to set it up just like real perfectly. Right now, we're just gonna focus on the experiment. Mop that up. And sandbox, we're gonna go to fill, vacuum. Hey, how'd oxygen get out of here? Okay, so that has all been destroyed. Now we're gonna let carbon dioxide and free reign over all of this. Blah. Cool beans. Oh, I swept up all my sand. Darn it. Sand, 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 sand. All right, there we go. So for equipment over here, I'm gonna use a thermal aqua tuner. We're going to try to keep it out of steel. Boom, I'll just put it over there. And next to that, I'm going to have a nice liquid pump, big and powerful. Boom, right there. And probably one extra tile just in case I wanna put some sensors next to it. That is probably a good little plan. So that's gonna be where the water is. So the water, instead of going up through a tank, it's actually just gonna come into this area over here if it needs to, if it, if it needs to overflow. If it needs to overflow, it's going to go over there. Wait a minute, wait a minute, that was for water. What am I thinking? Too many ideas bouncing into each other. No, this is liquid oxygen. Liquid oxygen, people. No, water, no. <laughs> it is, both, okay. So the cooling loop up here, that's gonna be cold going to come out and it's going to go in there so that's nice and cold however I want it to be in an insulated tile so that it doesn't try to warm up quite as much you know so it's not like in the water or whatever so it'll be over there and that's going to head in I probably should check the temperature of that no I'm, I'm gonna check the return temperature so just like we're doing with gas this is going to be cold and then cold ish and then at that point, what I want to do is check the temperature of it. And I need to make the choice. Am I going to do something with it or am I just going to recool it? Okay, so. Um, thermal sensor goes right here. That's gonna tell me if it's below a certain temperature. And if it is, then I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna shove it right back into the aqua tuner and cool it back down. Otherwise, I could just head on out and have, and be all kinds of fun. Now, if I take a look at the gas loop here again, heading in, that can go in loop. Loop has priority, priority one. Pri this is backwards. See, every time. Okay, so that might be backwards, but let's see what happens. Okay, so the liquid flows around, goes into here, comes out, and does its number. Okay, so if the temperature is below, we're going to bring it through here and up through there. If it's still above, then we're just gonna let it run back around. Now, because this was already running over here, we have a thermal regulator set up. Everything should be nice and cold and I'm not going to burst the pipes because the pipes themselves should be getting down to temperature here pretty soon. Yes, and they're down to temperature, awesome. So that means I can use this right here as a way to seed that pipe with liquid oxygen. Of course, before I do that, I should probably, should probably take care of all the power that I need. 
Okay, first off, I under need to understand what's the temperature. Okay, so the oxygen is going to remain in liquid form as long as it is below 183 and above 218. So I'm going to say if this is above negative 205, that might be a little too close. Above, say if it's above negative 200, then it's going to try to cool it down some more. Otherwise, it's just going to let it run around. Okay, so I need to bring in a more powerful chunk of wire. Ooh, I don't know if I want to bring that one in. I'm going to use a large power transformer here to get the power to where I need it to go. Short and jump on over that. I'm going to deconstruct a bunch of power wires that I don't need. And power everything up. There we go. Boom. No! Don't delete the sand! Crap! Get on over there. Man, that clear floor, clear floor tool is so nice. It gets me in trouble. Okay, so I was doing something over here uh, with the liquid. <laughs> Can anybody remind me what I'm doing? I was going to pipe in the uh, this, this water because this water is going to carry the heat to the carbon skimmer that's going to delete the heat. Yeah, and don't even complain about this being complicated. Like, <laughs> you must be new here. <laughs> All right, do I want to pump that liquid or do I just want it to run through? Okay, so what I want it to do, here's what I want it to do. I want this to act like an overflow bucket. No, 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 no. And we're just going to pump it. I think that's the right way to do it. So bring the water in here. Okay. We dump it just like a septic tank. Yep. That's where my brain goes. All right. So <laughs> we bring it in here. We let this heat up. And then once it's reached a particular temperature, we will then pump it back out. Or once it's reached a certain... No. No. The temperature check is over here. What I just want it to do is circulate. The temperature check doesn't have to be there. It could be down here, which means I don't need a pump over here. <laughs> Good luck keeping up with this one. This, this plan's all over the place. All right, so plan, plan F or whatever we're on now has the water, the cooling water, it's going to come on over here, and we're going to splash around in this tank of what will be water, like a happy little tank. But what we're doing here is we're going to check the temperature at one point. Well, we can just leave that in place, whatever. We'll just check it there. Which means that the other liquid tank that I got rid of last time, yep, it's going back in. We're going full circle on this one. Go around, go around, go over here, go over here, go over here, go over here. Perfect, perfect. And I'm way too lazy at this point to do anything different. So we're just going to knock this out and add the other carpet skimmer right next to it. Click on that. Click copy. Plop it downy. And then just connect everything from that spot to that spot. From that spot to... Yeah, that spot. Is that not the most confusing intersection ever? At least the power is simple. All right. Give this a little bit of automation. Boom. And then I'm going to fill this over here, not with sand. That would not be good. I'm going to fill it with water. And we're going to make it 85 degrees Celsius. So 358, that's what I need over here, 358.15. No germs. There you go. What do we have? A little bit of oxygen in there, no big deal. Uh, let's just mop a little bit of that up. Probably should save the game. Okay, so now I think we have reached the definitive moment where, where I start painting in over stuff like this. <laughs> ah, okay, so now I need the, the tanks that I had over here last time. All right, no problem. A little bit of water. We're not going to put that much into it. There you go. Splash around. Fill this. Oop, we're going to use the other tool. 
No, go away. Go away. Uh, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. Two bajillion kilograms of that. And then we're going to fill this with a vacuum. Wrecked. Whatever was in there. What else do I need? Hydrogen? I don't think I need anything else. I think I got... Oh, oxygen. Psh. Of course. And that's important that it's at 50 degrees Celsius. Okay, another question that came up here is why did I have the inlet, you know, gas valve for the oxygen pump? And the answer to that was that if you were to pump too much oxygen over here too quickly, what, what would happen is that you would condense it down into liquid, but you were condensing it so fast that you would, you're basically putting in so much oxygen that you're running this at its very, at its limit to where every time it has just enough energy to condense some of that oxygen, it goes down to its liquid form. But we don't have any extra energy to cool the liquid oxygen a little bit further. So you could never actually drop the temperature low enough to be in a, at a safe temperature to store. So that's why you have to limit the inlet of the oxygen so that the liquid that you store is at a lower temperature. Because the energy you don't spend on converting that from a gas to a liquid you're using to cool that liquid further. And while the rest of this video may not be helpful, that part probably is. <laughs> oh yeah, I never answered this question. How much oxygen can the thermal aqua container cool uh, to be liquid? Blah, blah. It's gonna be 125-ish. So that's basically going to be 1.25 kilograms, although if we were to actually calculate that out a little bit more, it would just be this times 10. It'd be more like that, but I'm expecting it to be more like this. So I actually need a lot more gas pumps. So since the test could potentially go as high as needing uh, one and a half kilograms a second, I'm gonna need many pumps, because that's only 500, so six pumps at least. And those are gonna combine into one. That's gonna combine into one. That's gonna combine into one. That's kind of annoying you, isn't it? That they're not like right next to each other. Okay, so to combine these very easily, I just do this number right there. So that way the outlet is always combined. I gotta find enough spots to like vent ox. Man, that's gonna be fun. And then we put the little gas valves right here. So things I don't need, I don't need that. I don't need that. Can I clear the floor? Yeah, I can this time. Which means I'm going to need a gas vent here and another gas vent there. So using ceramic, the best I got. Insulated gas is there, there, there. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of power actually when you stop to think about that. Each one of those is 240 watts. Oh, that's a pretty power hungry system then. All right, so going to need yet another large transformer because when you combine up all of the gas pumps and this stuff here, it's gonna take a lot more power. Hungry, hungry pumps, zero. Okay, for the liquid pump, we're just gonna go ahead and do this number. Not radiant, please. Radiant, liquid valve, and that goes, oh, not that far. Plumbing, plumbing, plumbing. And then this gas vent can just run from, and the power for those can be the power for those. Awesome, okay, good deal. So the liquid that's flowing into here will now start to circulate and it's going to catch a little bit of heat here from this th thermal regulator. So we should see that this is dropping down in temperature. We can, that's awesome. Get that ceramic out of there, clean up the floor a little bit. And now the liquid that's flowing through here, it's coming in at 13 degrees, and I guess the liquid that I put in is at nine, so then it's leaving, so it's taking some of that heat with it, or it's actually depositing, whatever. Heat is going from here to there, and I don't really need this to be any more than one continuous loop, so I'm just gonna turn that off. And what happens is if it was to go over a certain temperature and then run through the skimmer, that would then expand the amount of liquid uh, space that it's going to take up. Because what's gonna happen is that each time these skimmers run, 
it's going to take up another block in this link right here. So the extra water will end up in that tank. So that tank is just useful for, well, the, it's true purpose. <laughs> it needs to be kind of a, an overflow. So let's just use the heat gun real quick here. Let's heat this up a little bit. Try to get a little bit of heat over here. There we go. That's like 90 degrees. Ooh, a little bit went to steam. I should be able to cool that down though. Look at this crazy system. So the steam is at 106, but the water is at 71. You know what? That's where we need a temperature shift plate. We'll put that right there and there. So that this steam should cool down to match the water more effectively. And once it gets down to 97, we should see it drop. Boom, there it goes. There's a comment, and this one's really helpful. So Raptor286 here says, uh, the phase change happens at three degrees after the temperature was explained. So in order to go to steam, you need to be at 103. In order for that to come back down, it need to be at 97. So that actually is explains why, um, why we would see things go above a certain temperature and then wait because what it's probably doing is it's probably just kind of making sure you have a ton enough energy to where it's actually going to change states rather than kind of going back and forth very quickly which would eat up a lot of cpu cycles okay so the question here is how hot is the water that's running through here it's at 87 degrees it is going up so once this goes above 90 degrees celsius what we're going to see is that this liquid will then start to go through these skimmers and start to cool down. So really we're just we're just testing this one loop right now. So if we just run it a little bit faster, 88, 89, there it goes, 90. So now the skimmers are running and they're deleting a bunch of heat because the outlet temperature is at 40 degrees Celsius. So look at that, boom, right there. We just lost 50 degrees Celsius. And, oh, look at this, they're combining on top of each other at three kilograms per spot right there. So that kind of slows up the water. You kind of see how that's slowing down. So this tank over here is now absorbing that interruption, keeping things from completely backing up. Meanwhile, the temperature that's now running through here, the polluted water has actually picked up quite a bit of heat from this thermal regulator inside of here, which is probably at a pretty toasty temperature. And then the remainder of that is ending up in the tank over here on the right, which is actually we should see it slightly cool down. Okay, so you can see it right here. It's going from 90 to 91, 90.8, 90.7. It's working its way back down. Okay, so yeah, here it is. It's now 89.5. So we should see the liquid. Yeah, it's stopped actually running through the thermal regulators at this point. Cool. So it's regulating itself as planned. Okay, so now... I want to take a little bit of liquid and I'm going to run it through the aqua tuner over here. Uh, so here we go. So that is now running up and through here and then back down. It's getting up to a temperature of 208, just like we saw with the hydrogen. And then it's going to check the temperature here, realize that it's still a little bit too warm. It's too hot. And then it's going to kick it down here to the aqua tuner. Wait a minute, it got too cold. I saw that cold damage. Oh, negative 210. Oops. And now this thing is continuing completely back. So that's at negative 208, 208. And we just have a bunch of oxygen in there that's kind of just, so it'd probably be a good idea to make this just negative 200 as well so that both are doing the same thing. So now neither system on either side is running and it's just trying to keep a cold temperature in this area. And a little bit of heat is leaking into this from one spot or another. It could, it's probably coming right across these liquid bridges and pipes and whatnot. But that's not what we're here for. We're here to pump in a bunch of oxygen. So actually let's just go ahead and disable this building because we just want to test only the thermal, uh, thermal aqua tuner and see how much liquid we can bring in now. Moving to one kilogram a second. I'm gonna need a bigger pump, aren't I? Oh, hey, hang on. Let's do this. Let's do this. This comes out. What am I doing? Uh, this comes out 
and it can also go into this tank at the same time that can then go up here if I saturated this thing already just that hold up what's going on here there we go so now there's more coming in and now I have a nice consistent loop see when that gap was there that was causing a big issue gross what are you doing now yeah oh boy more plumbing Please stand by. So only if there's a gap. Okay, do I want to take that out? Otherwise, I don't care. And I just want it to run. The problem is the gap forms before the temperature check. Hmm, it's not really what I wanted. Okay, construct, construct. Let's try this. There we go. Whoa, yeah. No, 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 yes. All right, yes. That's what I wanted to see. Liquid goes over there, and then when it stops, it starts to pull in more liquid. So everything just keeps moving. And then I'm going to add a little bit of oxygen. We're gonna start off with 200. We'll keep it light. Okay, it seems to be able to handle that, no problem. Just speed it up to make sure. That's a little too fast. That's still too fast. There we go, it's cruising. There we go, that's like the perfect speed. We can still see what's going on here. The water that's moving around, it is conveying some of that heat. So we can see that this water will eventually get up to a little bit over 90 degrees Celsius. And then there we have it. It's now cooling back down. So that's re that's now at a steady state. Do, 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 do. Awesome, okay, that's cool. And the liquid cooling loop using liquid oxygen to increase the amount of liquid oxygen it has seems to be working out just fine. So let's take this up to 500 grams a second and see if I can measure some spot where that's going to tell me if this is failing or not. That's going to be this spot right here. So that's maintaining a temperature of negative 212 degrees Celsius. No problem at all and we keep pumping more and more into it. So let's take this up to 750. You can see how much more often this thing is running down here. So the thermal aqua tuner is actually doing a, a lot of work at this point. And the temperature is going up. Look at that. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Looks like we have some inefficiencies. Wow, that is not running as anywhere nearly as fast as I thought it would. We cannot handle 750. I got to recheck my math here. Let me put a little more effort into it. Oh, that's where the problem was. Aha. See, I was assuming hydrogen. No, 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 that's not right. Because what I'm working with is liquid oxygen, which has a lower specific heat capacity. That's where my error was. 33,600, that's the amount of DTUs that can transfer. So the amount of things that can transfer, question seven was wrong. So it's that times 10,000. Okay, so that's where the difference is. The aqua tuner on liquid oxygen can only transfer 141 uh, duplicate thermal units, whereas the thermal regulator can transfer 33,600. So just out of curiosity, if we take the power and we put that down over here, which is 1200, zero, zero, and we put this over here, which is 240, and we take the DTUs divided by the power, we now see... We get uh, that to that. Interesting. The thermal aqua tuner is less efficient than the thermal regulator. Who's what? Who saw that coming? Okay, so now that I have an adjusted number here, blah. How many carbon skimmers so far? Well, we already got two. How much oxygen can the thermal aqua tuner actually handle? Equals that divided by that times 1,600 grams a second. Plot twist! This is why you double check your math. Thermal aqua tuner sucks. It doesn't actually suck. What does suck is using liquid oxygen in the thermal aqua tuner because it's just not very efficient. As we've seen in a couple of spots here, the amount of DTUs per watt that I'm getting 
is 117, whereas from the thermal regulator, that's 140. That's just that one machine, though. But the rest of it doesn't actually matter, now does it? Because it's, yeah, whatever. Still, now let's see just what happens if we keep this at, at 600 grams a second, right? Does it warm up? 197, do I see a 196? Oh, I see a 196. Okay, so as we saw last time, there were some inefficiencies. We were uh, slightly inefficient, whereas 125. So then if I take that multiplied by our inefficiency factor, then 526 should be my maximum limit if there's something else going on here that we just don't know. Or at least I don't know at this point. Ah! So dropping that down for a little bit, we'll let things cool down. 526. Okay, so that is maintaining a steady temperature. Let's go ahead and try to bring that up a little bit. Let's try 550. If the temperature starts to increase, then I've gone, I'm going too fast. 197, 197, 197. That's a 196. We're going a little bit too fast. So 530 is a pretty ish, normalish number right there. It seems to be able to maintain that. Or is it exactly 526? Yeah, that is slightly, very, very slowly warming up. What is going on here? You guys are gonna have to let me know what you think down there in the comment section below. Uh, why this is just, where I'm getting like this, how is it that I'm getting the exact same number here and there that the system is at a balanced, no, no, it can't be. Because even this is slowly, very, very slowly. If you watch it for an excruciatingly long amount of time, you will see that it is slightly warming up. And that's gotta be the energy bleeding into the pipes up here from the oxygen or whatever that's flowing around. Yeah, because that's just slowly warming up. Okay, so there's some inefficiencies, making this even less efficient. But if I were to look at the reports here, just for the previous cycle right there, whoo, we're talking 894 kilojoules. That is power hungry. Look at that thermal aqua tuner, sucking down all sorts of power. The gas pumps, sucking down all sorts of gas, for the power carbon skimmers running a little bit, the mini liquid pump. It's a lot of work. Or not that much more oxygen, actually. Hmm. And without a valve to stop it here, <laughs> there's no way for me to actually ever turn this thing off. Um, probably need a, a, a valve right there, just so I can, if I needed to, I could just take all this liquid oxygen and, and keep it inside the liquid reservoir if I needed to turn this off. Otherwise, it would stop over here, wait until it heated up enough, and then burst the pipe and make a headache for you. Hmm. Interesting. Meanwhile, though, I've made 90 kilograms of dirt. Well, not just yet. You gotta run it through compost. Requires flipping. Can I get a flipper arm for the auto sweeper? Please, Clay? That'd be awesome. All right, so let's review what we've learned thus far. One, check your math before you go and build an entire system around it. Two, um, the liquid aqua tuner running on liquid oxygen really is not that effective. Matter of fact, it's less efficient than just running more thermal regulators. So keep that in mind. Although it is more space efficient because you're getting more in less space. So that is the definition of space efficiency, isn't it? If And then on one final note here, obviously what we run through the thermal aqua tuner matters a whole lot so we should really take a look at the most ridiculous liquid that we have available to us super coolant which will be in the next episode i think this is going to be a really cool system to rework repackage into a nice blueprint so that we can actually use it for refrigeration or cooling whatever we want around the base as needed not necessarily just making liquid oxygen but just really kind of exploring what all we can cool with that thermal regulator, and just how many different ways we can conveniently delete heat. The carbon skimmer there, that's actually a, quite a bit more powerful than I first thought that it was going to be. Or it, it does a lot of work. Thank you to all the people that have been subscribing recently. You guys are absolutely awesome. Also, a very big thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys are just super awesome. 
and you guys are going to allow me to do some things that I've always wanted to do here for the last several years, so that's going to be pretty awesome. More on that in the future. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Have a great day, guys. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar out. And this time it's actually out. End of video. No secret stuff at the end. Where I go on and I keep talking about the system like it was a fake out. Like the last video. Sometimes you got to think about something. Sometimes you got to tag things on. You know, the thoughts just keep coming. <laughs> like this. This is madness. <laughs>